What is going on? My live is not living. What is, what is this? It, why is my thing not coming up? <sighs> this is why I can't have nice things, boys. All right. Hang on, what's, Jackson, can you see me right now? Let me know, because I can't see myself on my end. I think something's acting up in my thing. Yeah, the first half was definitely better than the first. You can see me? Okay. Oh, I'm not really sure what's going on um, on my end. Let me see something real quick. All right, cool, 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 cool. All right, but, um, but anyways, you know, I'm just gonna. I actually can't see myself on my end. That's that's the part that I was concerned about. But we're good, boys. Um, uh, definitely, you know, a night and day performance compared to how we were last time. You know, still not great because we didn't win. Um, much better. You know, overall effort. Obviously, Lowry was the biggest difference maker in this one. His Efficiency should be noted because it's one of the best games he's had since, you know, the whole injury bug thing started. Um, Jordan Clarkson was mediocre. Um, nah, never mind. Marty, uh, Jordan Clarkson was cheeks. I changed my mind. Um, <laughs> Johnny was kind of irritating me a little bit. And that was really, you know, the negatives of this game. Uh, Lowry in this one, 10 of 19 from the field, 6 of 9 from the the three-point line, eight of eight from the free throw line, you know, seven boards, two assists, one steal, one block, only one turnover, 34 points, led both teams. Box score plus minus of a negative two, you know, plus, uh, you know, uh, not bad, not bad. Very solid performance for him overall in just 34 minutes. You had Taylor Hendricks in 29 minutes going three of eight from the field. He was one of five from three, which was not great, but, you know, growth, and that's the, what we're expecting this season. Um, hit the one free throw that he took, had six boards, one assist, didn't have any turnovers, eight points, negative eight, box score plus minus. We saw John Collins in 30 and a half minutes go for nine of 16 from the field, two of five from three, one of three from the free throw line, had 11 boards, two assists, two steals, no turnovers, 21 points, which was our second leading score. Box score plus minus still of a negative 10. And then you had Colin Sexton with the worst box score plus minus of a negative 15. In his 29 minutes, going 8 of 15 from the four, uh, 3 of 6 from 3, hit the one free throw that he took, had two boards, six rebounds, and only one turnover for a total of 20 points. Not bad overall, honestly. Um, we naturally ended up seeing Keontae George next and his 35 minutes going, you know, what, what was really curious was Keontae George's box score plus minus despite his poor numbers. I'm not going to lie. He was 2 of 11 from the field. That's 18%. He was 0 of 6 from 3. That's 0%. He was 2 of 2 from the free throw line. He had 5 rebounds. He had 6 assists, 2 steals, and 3 turnovers. And for his total of 6 points, he only had a box score plus minus of a negative 1. Um, Really sneaky. Jordan Clarkson obviously gets the most – gets my most – uh. My, my negative MVP, I guess, of the game. 0 of 7 from the field, 0 of 2 from the three point line, 4 of 5 from the free throw line, though. Uh, four rebounds, eight assists, but five turnovers. Uh, four total points in a box score plus minus of a negative 11. So, yeah, definitely in 33 minutes, a whole lot of, a whole lot of nothing um, was, was added to the game by him. Bryce Sensible in 16 and a half minutes, 1 of 3 from the field, 1 of 2 from the three point line. He had three boards, one assist, two turnovers, three points, box score plus minus of a zero. Walker Kessler, similarly, box score plus minus of a zero. Um, and 16 and a half minutes as well, four four from the field, one or two from the free throw line. Had four rebounds and one steal. No turnover. 
for his nine points. And then Johnny in his 13 minutes was all four from the field, all four of them being three pointers. He had three rebounds, two assists, and uh, no points. So four box score plus minus of a negative three. Overall, our field goal percentages were down. Um, Jordan Clarkson and Keontae George being the main culprits in this situation. Obviously, together combining for two of 18, um, which isn't good for obvious reasons, which made us shoot 42.5% from the field. We were 33.3% from three, 13 of 39. Um, our worst shooters being Keontae and Johnny Yujang, which combined for 0 of 10. Um, uh, if you want to throw Taylor Hendricks in there as well, you could. Um, that would make us 1 of 15. Not much better. Um, we were 18 of 22 from the free throw line, though. Had 53 boards, 28 assists, which is slightly above our usual assist totals. Uh, we had six steals. We only had two blocks at this time and 12 turnovers. For the Mavericks, though, they shot 48% from the from the field. They were 12 of 42 from the three-point line, which was good because we were selling out a lot on three on three-pointers. And I was kind of confused by our coverage a little bit. I saw a lot of doubling when it seemed a little bit unnecessary. And then you would see guys really push for a strong contest on that immediate kick pass. But it paid dividends. Um, unfortunately, we just didn't have the scoring punch to send it home. But yeah, 28% from them from three-point range, 15 of 18 from the free throw line. They had 51 rebounds. They had 31 assists. They had nine steals. They had seven blocks, five courtesy of that man, Daniel Gafford. Goodness gracious, if I could get Walker Kessler to play like Daniel Gafford, he needs to go to whatever camp Daniel Gafford does in the summer. He needs to be working out with him. 6-6 six, six from the field in 27 minutes, 1-2 from the free throw line, 10 boards, 3 of them being offensive, 5 assists, 2 steals, 5 blocks, no turnovers, 13 points, and a team high box score plus minus of a plus 15. And then Daniel Gaffer was hooping. And a lot of people, a lot of casual, not, not even casual, a lot of people will look at his numbers and just be like, oh, you know, that's cool. You know, he's a center. He just had a cool double-double. No, it was the way he got, a, he got that double-double. If we can get Walker Kessler to play that sort of way, I'd love it. I'd love it. I don't need Walker to give me 20 a game, but a solid, a strong 14, you know, a strong nine, 10 boards. And he knows even five blocks, you know, give me three, give me two some nights, just strong effort. Yeah. That's what you want from a starting center in today's game, especially considering the fact that Daniel Gafford isn't known for having a, a shoot, a shot on him, like outside of six, outside of 10 feet, he's cooked. Um, from us from a scoring perspective but strong screens great roles knows where he needs to be on the court and makes proper decision making and that's why he works so well with Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic on the floor by the way um Kyrie had a decent game in the end Luka was struggling to get things going in the beginning that first half got ugly he only had nine points but in the second half he uh dropped 20 so it didn't matter 10 of 24 from the field for him to 41 percent two of 11 from three we were really doubling him hard when he tried to get shots off from three he was seven of eight from the free throw line. He had 12 rebounds, 13 assists, um, the triple double, obviously. One steal, one block. He did have four turnovers, which led his team. They only had six turnovers as an entire unit, which is insane, by the way. Um, but 29 points, box will put myself a plus 10. Kyrie Irving in 35 minutes, excuse me, 36 minutes. By the way, Lucas was in 41 minutes. He was 10 of 21 for 47 and a half percent, four of nine from three. Three of three from the free throw line, three rebounds, five assists, you know, two turnovers. He had the other two, obviously. Um, 27 total points in the box score plus minus of a plus nine. PJ Washington wasn't a slouch himself. Six six of 12 from the field in 35 minutes, two of six from three, two of two from the free throw line, four boards, one assist, one steal, no turnovers, 16 points, box score plus minus of a plus six. Um, nobody else super notable on their team. I went over their most ones. Derek Jones Jr. was just kind of there. Um, Dante Exum was just kind of there. So was Derek Lively, uh, Max Kleber, same thing. And then Jaden Hardy, Dwight Hop, Dwight Powell, AJ Lawson, yada, yada. Uh, Tim Hardaway Jr., sneaky, decent game. Um, didn't shoot great from the field though. In 29 minutes, five of 14 from the field for 35%, three of nine from three, 33%, two boards, four assists, three steals, just kind of filling in the gaps for them. Had 13 points, box score plus minus, but plus eight. Those are all of the, you know, the, the important pieces of the game. <sighs> but, you know, it was what it was. It happened. But uh, let me see here. We said George has hit the rookie wall. Oh, he slammed that thing going 110 miles per hour. That boy, that brother is cooked right now. I'm not going to lie. 
um, it was rough. It was good, Incognito. He said, I think I may go to the Spurs and Cavs game. Mm, let me know how that one goes if you do. Let me know. Talk to me about Wimby um, when, you, when you come back from that one. Clarkson and George have, were the worst guards and played more than Colin Howe. Uh, cause George is the rookie and cause Clarkson, I don't, I have nothing to say about Clarkson at this point. Any assumption I make is going to be wrong regardless. So I'm just going to go ahead and assume that, you know, he's cooking in practice or something, or they just want to get him reaccustomed to the game. Granted this, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. This is his first game back from injury, but at the same time, no bueno, you know? Zach said, we tried, hey, boys. Yeah. Up until about eight minutes left in the fourth quarter, then things started. The, the rotations got a little bit shaky. We saw a three-guard lineup with Clarkson and George, who were both shooting like god-awful from the field, which made no sense. Um, but, you know, neither here nor there. Good luck with Hardy. He's really a secondary coach. He can't manage his subs and the game. I think he can. I think it's a situation of – what he what his expectations are for the season because if you look at the way he made substitutions early on in the season if you compare right now the substitutions he makes doesn't even match what he did at the beginning of the season you remember how bad we were at the beginning of the season right like it's it's different to the point where i'm not going to say somebody's pulling his strings but he's definitely having um uh how do you want to say there's an expectation for what he's supposed to do despite being the head coach right now. And I don't love the expectation that's set for him, but nevertheless, he has um, a role to play to stay on the, on the good side of the front office. Cause at the end of the day, you know, they do cut the check for him and things of that nature. And these days you never know your head coach is never safe, but I, uh, I have faith in Hardy though. Um, I don't hold this season against him. Because there were certain stints of this season where he where he objectively was he we lost or we struggled because of poor coaching and those are things that accountably why accountability wise he is the reason why like he is the head of the snake at the end of the day but as soon as we went into the you know we're gonna play the young guys era or as I've always coined as I've coined it the soft rebuild um. I hold very little against him for the fact of the expectations for what he's supposed to do immediately changed. Like after the trade deadline, it, Will Hardy could no longer be Will Hardy that wanted to do certain things, the Will Hardy that wanted to win a specific way, the Will Hardy that wanted to run specific rotations. It became um, Will Hardy with – it was Will, it was asterisk Will Hardy plus expectation. And I think that kind of messes things up. It, it really – like, I'm not going to lie. The game against the Rockets made me hate basketball, guys. Like, y'all, anybody that was in here yesterday, y'all remember how I was feeling after that one or the day before, whichever one it was. Like, that was that was just bad basketball. That was that was atrocious basketball. Right out the gate, too. Just sucker punch down 20 at the end of the first. It's like never a great feeling, especially when you give up basically 50 in that first quarter. But, you know, you get better. Eventually, <laughs> eventually, you know, just not, not that <sighs> it's not, it's just not, a, it's just not a great look for us right now. I'll say that. I'll say that. Um, but, 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 but where are we? Hair looking clean. Appreciate you, Zach. I got to get it redone. I'm not gonna lie. My part's coming out, but I've had it for three weeks now. Just vibe. Go for like that anime protagonist. <laughs> Something like that, I guess. Makes me look more sophisticated. I need to put on glasses one of these videos. Then I'm gonna really look like I know what I'm talking about. Um we said Hardy continues to cut off his water every time he gets hot clockwork. Yeah, you're right about that. Um hair looking clean. Appreciate you, appreciate you, Tyson. You said, why we keep playing these G League guys, Luca, Johnny, you say? Um, Because this is the only time it's going to be acceptable for us to play them copious amounts of minutes. Like next year, this can't happen. um, Unless we immediately commit from the beginning of the season to just being cheeks all year, which I don't think we're going to do, Um, considering that all of our oldish pieces 
are gone. And at the end of the season, THT is going to be up for a contract extension because his, his deal is going to be done. Now. I think we're just going to let him walk. So at that point, he's going to be, he's going to have his role filled by a rookie that gets brought on. And then you'll see either Johnny will have a bigger role or he will have no role and he'll just be a G league sensation. Um, same thing with, you know, Lucas Sominich, he's probably going to be a, a bench, a bench, a bench pro. He's a practice test dummy at this point, honestly, which there's nothing wrong with that. And we appreciate those people that are, you know, in our service in that way. But that's really all. We're, that's all I expect. I'll say that. That's all I expect. There's very few pieces that we've been playing recently. Um, Kyrie Lewis had a good game last game. You know, one of the only people that did, but still bench piece. Luca, same thing. My uh, Potter, same thing. <sighs> THT gone. Um, we know what Chris Dunn is. Um, by the way, he didn't play today because he's serving that two-game suspension. Omer year at seven. I like him a lot. He just doesn't get that much opportunities. Um, a lot of times I feel like he's more consistent with what I want Walker Kessler to be than Walker Kessler is. He's just not as prone to getting blocks, but that's also because he's a lot more sound and strong in his base and just the way he goes about, you know, getting stops defensively he does he's not one to jump he's not one to swap hands up all the time um you know i like bryce um i'm finished with clarkson not gonna lie obviously we know i like sexton see i'm not gonna lie side note watching sexton and irving go at it as my two favorite guards in the league oh man i wish i was courtside so i could get a photo of that that's like that's top tier to me um Keontae is hitting a wall right now. He he's got to show me something, cause it's getting it's getting wicked now. Cause I, I was doing a little numbers test beforehand, just to give y'all a little taste. Cause you know, I, I found that the easiest way to best articulate my arguments in any situation, men lie, women lie, numbers don't. Now numbers can be used to skew things for your argument, but numbers don't lie. It is what it is. Um, so. To give him his fair shake, I was like, you know, he started roughly the last 20-ish games plus. Um, over the past 20 games, to give you guys a, a ballpark, he's played 31 and a half minutes, averaged 16.3 points, uh, three rebounds, 5.2 assists, 0.8 steals, 0.2 blocks, and 2.9 turnovers a game, right? That's, the turnovers are really the only rough part, but 16-3-5 and five is solid, bro. That's solid numbers. Now, it's when you get into the actual percentages where things start looking a little bit eh because – on 14 field goal attempts the game, he's shooting 40.8%. Um, and then half of those are three-pointers, though, which is explains why his percentage is slightly lower because he's shooting 35% on that one, right? Now, that implies that the remainder is – so he's 2.5 per, for seven from three-point range on average over the past 20 games. But from a two-point field goal perspective, that means that he is – uh, let me think, let me think, let me think, let me think, let me think. Three, 3.24, 6.9, which is just under, which is just under 50%. So that's acceptable, right? It makes sense considering the large sample size of threes that he's taking. Now that sounds really good, but we also have to remember those two really good 30 point games were in that one where he was really hitting and he's been really on and off since, and he's been a lot more off recently. Now, if we cut it down to a 10 game sample size, He's playing 30, 30 minutes a game, 16.1 points, so still 16, right? Three and a half rebounds, so he's up half a rebound. And assist-wise, he's down 0. 0.6. He's down to four and a half, right? 0. 0.6 steals, 0. 0.2 blocks, cool. His turnovers have gone up, though. It went from 2.9 average over the entire 20-game stint. So when we shorted it down, it's 3.3 .3 turnovers um, on, on basically the same number of field goal attempts on 13.7 as compared to the 13.9 previously. He's shooting 38.7% from field goal range. Now you'd say, okay, so maybe he's taking a larger sample size of three pointers and that's why his field goal percentage overall has decreased. No, that's not the case. He's a 1.7 for 6.3 from three. So he's attempting less threes, right? He's attempting about one less three a game and he's shooting 8% worse from three point range. But because on six attempts, it's a significant chunk of his overall average, um, which you know isn't great. And then his two point for his two point field goals also take a slight dip as well, which doesn't help things. Um, I'm hoping it's a temper. It's just you know he's got to work through it. 
it's ugly though. You know, nobody likes seeing their rookie guy that's supposed to be like a really big piece for the future, you know, putting up, you know, six points, three boards, five assists, or, you know, three turnovers. Like it's just not attractive. Um, especially when you have to see it night in and night out. It's just not a, it's not a numbers game that you really want to play, especially when we have the high expectation for what Keontae George could potentially be. Right. People are talking about putting Colin Sexton on the bench so that we can put in a proper two guard and then have Keontae run the point guard. Well, Keontae got to – he can't just show occasional promise. He needs to show consistent promise because right now he's looking like Jordan Clarkson did the first half of the season and honestly Jordan Clarkson right now. They're basically the same person because um, they're, they're both capable of getting high assist totals, right? Clarkson had eight today. Keontae had six, but they both combined for eight turnovers as well. Not the most ideal situation. But again, remember, he's a rookie. He needs time to, you know, sort himself out. Um, this can't happen next year, though. Unless, again, like we, like I said, we completely commit to tanking from the beginning of the season as the expectation. Like, all guy, okay, guys, we're going to be cheeks this year. We're playing the young guys still. That's the only way that it's going to be acceptable for him to continue to have these games. Because next season... We need him to come out here, and we need him to be a lot more efficient. We need him to shoot around 44% from the field. It's not going to be terrific, but, you know, I'm not going to expect him to shoot, like, Kyrie percentages, right? Kyrie's, like, shooting 49% from the field and, like, 40.5% from three right now. I'm not expecting that from Keontae George. That's unreasonable. But, you know, 44% is, you know, right there in that ballpark of, like, league average comfortability and also considering a large sample size of three-point attempts. I wouldn't be mad if he was close to, you know, 40, 44, 43% from the field as long as he's like 35 36 percent from three but if he ends up shooting 39 percent from the field and 30 percent from three on the season next year that's not uh that's nasty work i'm not gonna lie that's uh that's not what we want to hear from him and overall this season on 10 10 and a half field goal attempts he's shooting 39 percent from the field and 34 percent from three which yeah obviously not the not the greatest numbers you know but anyways you know i'm i'm finished i'm fin I'm finished with that part we said uh smash that like button while he's on his monologue gents <laughs> i was having that main character moment you know how it is that usually in college highlights are crazy they are and the fact that we're not seeing it now is kind of unfortunate i guess because he's still put he's putting up numbers he was putting up numbers in the g league when we had him assigned there um, so he's earned his right to prove that he's, you know, serviceable at the NBA level or not serviceable at the NBA level. And either way, I respect him. Nevertheless, I'm not going to look at Johnny and be like, oh, yo, Johnny's trash, bro. Why is Johnny getting an opportunity? Like, no, Johnny's not trash. Anybody that thinks Johnny's trash, go look at the, look at that tape. That brother's tough in certain situations, but that's the problem. In certain situations, we need him tough all the time. Um, I know Hardy has, uh, this team to work with, but I don't like him too much. I can respect that. It's extremely bad. He plays favorites. Some things he can control, like not overplaying certain guys. He expects them to close the game. That I personally think that it's an expectation at this point. Um, now earlier on in the season, like when we were when we were winning games and Clarkson was getting certain types of burn, I was getting irritated. Y'all, y'all remember that? I don't know if it's a you know Clarkson just has favoritism by default, or Clarkson gets the opportunity to do whatever regard. Um, and that's why I'm a big proponent for just letting Clarkson go because this year has been his statistically his worst season of his career, right? The very beginning of the season, it made sense, right? They were trying to make him something that he's not. And when it didn't work, what do we do? We moved him back to the bench or he should have been, but then he also wasn't putting up great numbers on the bench and he proceeded to shoot a lot worse consistently and things just never got better. And it just never, I don't know. Like Clarkson was objectively the only person that was consistently put in winning situations. Like he's had the longest leash out of anybody to beat cheeks. He's been given the, the most opportunity to beat cheeks. And that's the thing that makes me very uncomfortable because it's like we hold all these other guys to like higher levels and higher expectations, but he was always immune from it. Right. Like I watched Colin Sexton start the season on the bench and get treated like he couldn't hoop no more. Like he was just an afterthought and then finally let him start. And then he was like, Hey, y'all remember me? Like, like y'all remember y'all wanted me in the trade, right? Like before Lowry, y'all really wanted me and I'm here now. Like, what's up? 
and you know he was doing his thing but you know we're here now we said Kari has been on uh Kyrie has been in god mode lately not nah, for real <laughs> he said shout out to <laughs> shout out to former youth Dante Exum a week yeah Clarkson had uh bad yeah and then everybody forgets that he had five bad nights that's the funniest part he be getting three minutes all season absolutely feels like the Jazz try for three quarters only yeah the fourth is for development that's the way it looked today I'm not gonna lie because we were we were really good that first half was sexy that third quarter was not bad but it was pretty decent you know I saw a lot of good things in the fourth quarter, we pulled out, we, we ran a three-guard lineup with two of our worst shooters, two guys having the worst shooting performances of the game on the court at the same time, who also don't play great defense, i.e. Jordan Clarkson and Keontae George, and then put them alongside somebody who, no matter how hard he tries, is going to be a defensive liability regardless, and Colin Sexton is like, okay, so are we forgoing defense for offense? Those other two brothers aren't scoring the rock right now, so what are we talking about? Um but you know, it was interesting. It was so bad, Chris Dunn got mad literally at that point. If they decided to tank trade Sexton and Lowry in the offseason, so they got to do something. What's up, Kurt? Thanks for giving us a fresh perspective. <laughs> I appreciate you tuning in, brother. No need to drag good players along like they're doing now. Yeah, it's getting annoying. Let us see Lofton in a few the last few games. Honestly, if we're gonna play fourth quarters like this, you might as well just throw Lofton out there. Like, yes, the brother's big, yes, he's overweight, yes, he can't move that great. But um 52 points is 52 points, G League or not. Um give that brother some burn. You know, a cool 15 minutes. A cool 15 minutes wouldn't kill you. We're losing anyways, right? <laughs> 15 is 15. <laughs> Let's go. Um the Jets were smart. They would have leaned heavily on developing Lowry and Sex and Duo. They complement each other. Others game, not to mention your two most efficient players. They could have been special. Yeah. The leash is as long as the distance between Utah and New York. <laughs> Try Utah and the Philippines. <laughs> From here to his home country. <laughs> That's how crazy that leash is. That 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 Clarkson leash, man. If a if debt if the IRS was that generous with taxes, I would never pay them. <laughs> I would never pay them. <laughs> but I don't have that option, unfortunately. <sighs> it happens. It happens, you know. But it shakes out either way, you know. Just gotta you gotta do what it do. Gotta do what it do. And things of that nature. But yeah, um, any more interesting thoughts or anything? Who do we play next, actually, before I, before I do anything? Um, Google Utah Jazz. Spurs tomorrow. Tomorrow is in what? Tomorrow is in actually tomorrow? Oh, tomorrow is in uh, over 24 hours tomorrow. Okay. Um, Spurs at home, Rockets at home, then we go on the road for the Kings, come back for the Cavs, go on the road for the Clippers, Warriors, come back for Nuggets, Rockets, go on the road for Clippers, Warriors again. Oof. Yeah, we're cooked this last part of the season. I said our win total could hit 34 if we really tried hard. News flash. We're not trying hard. We'll probably end the season with 30 wins. I'm not going to lie. 30 or 31 is my new predict prediction. <sighs> Y'all remember when 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 they were cashing my check and we looked like a six seed? We we looked like we were we had that ceiling. I remember. It's gone now. <laughs> it's gone now. Jazz don't need a rebuild this season. It's going to be annoying to see us recycle bad, literally. <laughs> we lack physical big man. Would love to see Lofton get physical. Like Green does. We're way too soft at every position. 
it's rough. It's rough. I think that's why, like, we. I, that's why I feel like we need Colin, a Colin Sexton on our team. Because if you trade, if we trade away Colin Sexton objectively, your guard room gets a lot softer, a lot more pretty, a lot more cutesy, right? You don't have guys that are going to die for loose balls. You don't have guys that are going to take everything personal. Like, yeah, you have Chris Dunn, but Chris Dunn's not going to sit there and be like super hype about it at the same time. And you don't have somebody that's like, like going to push the tempo, like really going to get in somebody else's grill. And Colin Sexton's that guy. He takes everything personal. And I would love to see that from my bigs, right? I'd love to see that from like a John Collins. I'd love to, I would, it'd be chef's kiss perfect if we could get it from, uh, what's his name? From Walker Kessler. But only the Lord knows when that's coming out of him, you know? NBA draft is overrated. These organizations don't know how to scout. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. They they really don't. They're not great at it. The, the number of misses actually in the draft, like when you actually look back at, at the metrics from like even five, ten years ago, it's actually hilarious. One thing I like that Hardy did earlier is mix up some and just throw teams off their groove a little. We're never going to be out town. We're never going to out town teams. Yeah, the very few times we ever like reach a point where that's something that happens for us. Not going to lie. You said facts, kind of just guess nowadays because everyone is just like a jaw in college and high school for real. <clears throat> it's hard. That's why, honestly, is it crazy that I'm high on LeBron James Jr.? Is it crazy that I'm that I'm high on Bronny? I don't think it's crazy. Um, I think that his health might be the only thing, like you know, the cardiac arrest thing. That might be the only concern for him. But, like, overall, I think him going to Sierra Canyon, I don't think USC was a great pick for him. Um, at the same time, it's obviously marred by his literal health issue that kept him out, and then he has to get back to not only playing basketball, but playing basketball at an extremely high level. I think Bronny's just not an individual player. I think he was raised as a system piece. So, like, Bronny on a team like the Spurs, like Bronny and Wemby, I feel comfortable with that. At least Bronny's going to make the right decision and give Wimby the ball, right? We're not going to see a game where Wimby plays 30 minutes and only gets seven shots, <laughs> right? We're going to see Wimby get properly used. Like, it's, it's, I don't know. Maybe I'm just chatting. You said we need to oust scheme teams, throw them off a little, yeah. Giannis will be, have a great year and win a chip and go crazy, but Dame will suck. Ooh, that's spicy. That's spicy. You said you never see a big man setting a hard screen to free up our guards. True. Everything's so, so quick. It's such a quick brush action. I like I like physical, like hard nose screen setting. I like I like seeing Stephen Adams set a screen, man. I'm not gonna lie. I'll be that guy. I like seeing Stephen Adams just like blow somebody up. It's like you remember when when that man Pat Bev came guarding. Who was he guarding? He was guarding like Westbrook. Was he guarding Westbrook like full court, or was it Shea? Just coming down the court, Stephen Adams sets that screen at the half court line, and this man gets just completely boomed on <laughs> right there. Man, I love a good screen. We said, uh, especially at back court pressure. Yeah, next year not this year. It's definitely possible. People count out Giannis too early. Ronnie's like a 90s guard. He can cook and score when he wants, but prefers to run a system. Yeah. And I think that I think that will either be his best attribute or his worst downfall. The fact that he's been built to be a system kind of cog in the machine type of player and not just a Bronny's gonna do what Bronny wants to do kind of guy. Because he's like his father in the fact that he's always gonna make the right decision, but it seems like his computer's running so hard. And also considering the health issue that he had, I actually don't know how the severity of it. Like I haven't looked into it. I don't think anybody except for the James family themselves know how you know severe it is for him. But if that's also playing into it, that poses a lot of extra questions because then it's like, okay, how hard does he know he can push himself before you know another more serious like health issue comes up? Or maybe there isn't anything, and maybe he's just being cautious this year you know, the rest of the season. He just wants to be able to play and, like, showcase, you know, hey, I can still pass. Hey, I can still make good reads. Hey, I can still play good defense. Yeah, I can still get assists, you know. I'm not going to shoot terrible from the field. I'm going to shoot okay. We'll get there eventually, you know. It could be one of those things.
An athletic Chris Dunn? I wouldn't be mad at that. I wouldn't be mad at that. A Chris Dunn that takes nine shot attempts a game, nine to eleven. I wouldn't be mad at that. I don't. I don't think Bronny's going to be, you know, a top seventy-five all-time player right now, judging from what I've seen. But I, I'll tell you right now, I'd be hard pressed to sit there and say that he won't be like a perennial all-star. Will he be a first-team All-NBA player? Probably not. Um, second, third team on a consistent basis. Yeah, I can see that. Um, now, of course, it also comes down to scheme and like what team ends up actually drafting him, of course, because if he gets drafted by like the freaking Hawks or <laughs> Lord forbid the Hornets, you know, I mean, well, then I would bring LeBron over here, I guess, if LeBron's serious about his thing. Um, but you know, who's to say, you know, who is to say, but yeah. Spurs might get top pick again. Hey, that's the way. Hey, that's the way it's looking. They're pretty close to it. Either way, they're gonna have their pick of the thing. Now, I wonder who they're gonna pair alongside Wemby. There has to be a brilliant scheme behind the reason why they've been as cheeks as they have been, because they really have no reason to be as bad as they've been. With Wemby since the All Star break, they've been like a top five defense when he's on the court. But they they shrink to like seventeenth when he's off, which is, you know, obviously not gonna help, especially against anyone they can't score. Let's see. It's a hot take. Giannis has been better than Jokic and always has been. Here's the one thing I'll say. You can kind of stop Giannis. Jokic, there's no better player on the planet than Jokic, Jokic in the last 1.5 seconds on the shot clock. I've never seen somebody piss me off more. And I'm a LeBron lover. So like those days when LeBron was going into Toronto, when you had DeRozan and Kyle Lowry as the prime duo in there, and that man was literally greasing them up and putting them on the skillet to burn. Like those were like, that was, that was peak basketball to me. That was like, oh my goodness, this one man cannot be stopped. He's different. Then I watch Jokic come over here every time, you know, 0.7 seconds on the clock. <sighs> Heaving the ball and it goes in. The other day it was from behind the backboard. Just nastiness. And it's not even like it looks like a calculated thing. The thing that pisses me off is, is it looks like he's just doing stuff out there. It just looks like he's out there. Just out, just out there hooping, man. Just, just, hey, F it. It might go in, you know. What's the worst shot? The shot that you don't take. He's one of those guys. <laughs> he's one of those guys. That's the part that be irking me about Jokic. Um, that is a hot take. I can respect it, but I think that Jokic's play style and his decision making skills um, put him above Giannis for me, and uh, because it will ultimately allow him to meld with better players, like in general, like across history, and even beyond that, it just puts him in a position to where he can make a lot more things shake, and and has so far. Also, they have as many picks, and let's be honest, if you were a free agent, would you play with Pops and Wimby, or an unknown situation in Utah? You raise a good point. What about Washington? Washington's cheeks. Washington's cheeks. Wish they let Denny cook. They need to let somebody else cook instead of that Kuzma pool duo. It's about time pool had to take that step back. But man, look, that man Kuzma just wants to be cheeks in silence. He just wants to, he just wants to be quiet out there. He just wants to put stuff on, get respect in his city, and just go about his day. And I respect it. I respect it. He he gives the vibes of a Charlotte player. Cheeks and okay. <laughs> Cheeks and okay. When he sat there and denied that 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 trade request to Dallas, I think it was, I was like, that is an interesting one. Cause Kuzma could really be good if he really wanted to be. Like he could be on it, you know, he could be a very good piece, but either way. Oh yeah, he did go to uh University of Utah, didn't he? I forgot that. I'm not going to lie. Jokic is unstoppable. He is proof. Brains are as valuable as athletics when you have both. Whew. Yeah. Yeah. That man is the most groundbound big of all time, but he still be doing the darn thing. Him pump faking on a dunk is hilarious to me. Like faking like he about to dunk and then just doing a layup. That man, Jokic is a hoot. That brother is hilarious. For no reason to. 
just be doing stuff out there. But I respect it, though. You know, that's just how he is, man. But yeah, any more, you know, thoughts, comments, concerns? I'm going to try and record a video after this. Right now, I'm on the East Coast. It is 1216. Oh, yeah. I have a, what's his name? I have that man, Braun. I have that I have that man, uh, Cam. Cam be editing now. He's still learning the rope, so please bear with him. But the past two videos, my Fontecchio video and then my Kenny Lofton Jr. video, both of those were his handiwork. Um, so I just kind of cut out cut out the extra gaps and then shoot it over to him and he adds my clips and numbers and stuff. So he'll progressively get better, but he's paying dividends right now. So I'm very appreciative of uh, our, our lovely, our lovely member of the family for his consistency and undying loyalty. He said, I think Giannis is so good, not because he can do anything just because he does the same move and it works. <laughs> Hey, I'm not going to lie. I can't even argue with that. That's a fair point. Boom. You said his name. You said his name, Zay. You said his name. Salon. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. Across the entire rookie class, that's the person that I'm that I'm very high on. Why are you very, fi- why are you very high on him, Wraith? Don't ask me, brother. That 6'10 length, that, that, that movability, you know, the, the versatility at his size, I think, could be very sneaky good. Um, now, of course, there's a less certainty with him, which is the question mark. But I do really like the prospect that he presents himself to be at the moment, at the very least. And so I would definitely be interested to see what all comes of it. Because I, I have a I have a high outlook on him, if I'm going to be quite honest with you. Kuzma is another Clarkson, basically. They're the same person to me. I mean, they they both played for the for the Lakers at the same time, so it stands to reason. But yeah, would you rather a short wing or a taller wing? A taller wing is always preferred. Um, as a shorter wing, you have to try harder on defense. Um, offensively, you just also have to be more skilled and more talented across the board because you can't afford you can't you're not afforded the opportunity to get away with certain things. Kai Jones. <laughs> Shaq is me. Not the lot the league has. TJ, his name is Kai Jones. <laughs> yeah, that man Kai Jones is still out of a job, is he not? Let me check real quick. Before I just start talking crazy about this man and whole time he's like back in the league. Kai Jones. Last play for the Delaware Blue Coats of the NBA G League. Huh. Really? Strong urge to sing intro. 27 days, 27 nights. <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> for literally no reason. Born in the Bahamas is a crazy place to be, huh? Mm-mm. Yeah, he was a curious case. I'm not going to lie. Oh, let me see. Uh, Jones hamstring became a free agency Monday after his 10-day contract with the Sixers expired. 76ers have the option of retaining Jones on a second 10-day deal, but it's unclear if the organization has any desire to do so while he's still recovering from a right hamstring strain. The injury prevented him from playing with the 76ers at any point during his initial 10-day deal, but he likely wouldn't have been featured and head coach Nick Nurse's rotation, even if he had been healthy. Fair play. Uh, he's still around. What is higher up, our defense or offense? Um, I would say our... Uh, oh, wow. I'd say defense. I'd say defense. I, I think that we're more capable. Like when all our pieces are aligned and when everybody's healthy, I think our defense looks a lot more consistent. Um, that offensive situation, sometimes it comes and goes. Sometimes we have great shooting. Jordan Clarkson is the biggest issue. If you don't have Jordan Clarkson out there and Keontae George isn't shooting, you know, absolute bricks, right? If you have your back, like when we had the backcourt of Chris Dunn and Colin Sexton, Dunn doesn't take a lot of shots. You're going to see a lot of more high-efficiency shots from your bigs. 
um, plus Sexton. I love that situation. I loved it back then. So from that standpoint, yeah, that would be nice. But outside of that, it just eh, defense for sure. Should have signed Thomas to a uh, one-year tiny deal. Hey, man, he's only on a 10-day contract. We'll see if he comes back. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Um, night yawn, making me tired. Hey, there we go. There we go. Kurt said it. Kurt said it best, ladies and gentlemen. <sighs> but yeah, that'll pretty much do it for me, gentlemen. Appreciate y'all tuning in. You know, what are your plans postseason? Got to keep going, though. I'm less optimistic about less season than I have been. Um. I actually don't know. I might just do like game by game nightly recaps or something, or just uh, I might focus on one team each round to like really zone in on. Maybe that's actually that's a really good question. I actually have no idea. Um, but I do need to figure that out. I've really been debating. Um, like regardless of what I do, this channel will always have like an emphasis on the Utah Jazz. Like I'll still always like you know, go live after games and whatnot. But what I may end up doing is I might just start doing other topics on this channel as well to create a more cohesive unit instead of just uploading on two separate channels. Um, I'm kind of up in the air about it. I know I did a vote before. I'll probably do a vote at the end of the season um, while also letting everybody know, like, obviously we're still going to be like a Utah Jazz, like centered or like, you know, most of the videos will be Utah Jazz related. Um, but there will be like, you know, I want to do a video about uh, Lonzo Ball, like really big, because to me, healthy Lonzo is great for the league. I miss him. I miss another grown man. Yes. Pause. <laughs> what, what was that saying? I'll be putting all my boys in position. No ditty. Yeah, basically. But we'll see how things sort out. I might just ask what everybody, I might do a poll. And ask everybody to comment down below what they think I should end up doing. Um, but that'll be coming up, you know, around the end of the season. We'll know for certain, for certain. But with that being said, and if all hearts and minds are clear, I appreciate you, lovely gentlemen, for, you know, staying around. You said it's funny how the second Dwayne Wade brought some, the jazz we started to rebuild. <laughs> Spicy stuff right there. But I appreciate y'all, you know hanging out this was obviously a much better showing by the jazz overall even though they didn't really seem to go for the win in the fourth quarter uh nevertheless it was definitely one of the more preferred situations for us we've definitely had lesser options we've definitely had much worse games literally the difference between this game and the game against the rockets is night and day um long term i do expect to see some more productive development from some guys you know can is still in his slump hopefully he gets out soon and bryce sensible should be looking to get some more opportunities um but with that being said, appreciate you guys tuning into this live stream. Be ready for some more content from the Utah Jazz community going forward. Make sure to like the video, subscribe, turn on post notifications, and become a member of the channel to help support the content. And as always, good morning, good evening, and good night, no matter where you're on the globe watching. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.